All right, welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church, our uh, afternoon service here. It's cold in Chicago. I was about 30 degrees outside, but it's warm in here. Uh, we're going to sing uh, page number 35, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. Page 35. Welcome, everyone. Page 35. Page 35. Verse 1. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I have sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I have ceased from my wandering and going astray Since Jesus came into my heart And my sins which were many are all washed away Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, and possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure, since Jesus came into my heart. And no dark clouds of doubt, now my pathway obscure, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart There's a light in the valley of death now for me Since Jesus came into my heart And the gates of the city beyond I can see Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into, came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Since Jesus came into my heart. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to teach now this afternoon on Second Chronicles 20, verse 1 to 29. And I titled this, God's, God Fights Our Battles. God Fights Our Battles. 2 Chronicles 20, 1 through 29, and hopefully I'll get through all this today, or we'll have a part two, amen? Amen. Let's see where God leads me on this. 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1 through 29. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord, for these verses, Lord, and thank you for your Bible, thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord, just... Uh, Lift up your word, Lord. Let you let, let the Holy Spirit speak and not me. Your words, not mine. And let these words touch, teach, and uh, just amplify your word. And we use it in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. All right. Second Chronicles 20, verses 1 to 29 says, 
It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazar Zantamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new gate, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art now thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen, and in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gaveth it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If, when evil cometh upon us, is the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Noah and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, when they turned from the, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of our of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou... King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For this battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight them in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of Cothanites and the children of Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord set ambush, ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when he had made an end of inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, and they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away, and they were three days in gathering of the spoil, it was so much. And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Berachach, for they, there they blessed the Lord, therefore the name of the place, name of the same place was called the valley of Berachach unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them, to go again to Jerusalem with joy. 
For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies, and then came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the, fear of the God, and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when he had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So here again, God fights our battles. Amen? Amen. So here in verse 1, it came to pass after this that the children of Moab, so the children of Moab, uh, their father was Lot. Uh, uh, his father was the son of Lot's oldest daughter. So that, that, that uh, Moab was... Uh, from incest, so and nothing good comes out of uh, sin. So, but uh, that's where the son, that's where Moab's from, uh, you know. And and Ammon, and it says in the children of Ammon, Ammon's another form of the name Benami, the son of Lot, uh, the, the definite people, a son of my people. Milcom and Moloch are named in the Hebrew Bibles as the gods of Ammon. So it was the son of the younger daughter from Lot. And that was Amen. So nothing good comes out of sin. Um, and then it says, And with them, other besides the Ammonite, came against Jehoshaphat the battle. So they came to take over Judah, to kill and destroy Jehoshaphat, Judah. You know, wicked people are always trying or planning to destroy or take over God's people in their land as they are today. You know, and then it says in verse 2, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazaz on Tamar, which is in Gadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. So, you know, Jehoshaphat, he feared. You know, we fear now too, but we go to God. You know, we, we, we seek God's wisdom. We, we seek God's counsel. Amen? Amen. We need to seek God. Like here, Je Jehoshaphat feared, and he went to seek the Lord. Amen? His counsel. And, you know, and then he, he proclaimed the fast throughout Judah there. So, you know, when things, you know, they asked Jesus when they when his disciples couldn't cast out the devil out of the man, Jesus said, this kind, this kind only goes out by, by prayer and fasting. So sometimes when something serious going on in your life, you need to fast and pray harder to the Lord. And, and uh, if it's something serious, you need to do that. Amen? Mm -hmm. um, and it says, And Judah gathered, verse 4, And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the circles of Judah that came to seek the Lord. So, you know, everybody from all the cities came to ask help of the Lord and, in, in, uh, and to seek his face, to praise God. When people seek God and not the world for advice, then you get, get the right answer. If you come to the Bible, you come to God's word, you come to God's people and ask them for advice, it may not be the advice you want to hear, but, you know, it, it's the right advice. You know, here was a big, big, this big army was coming to fight them. They, they know they, with man it wasn't possible. With God, with God all things are possible. So they, they were scared, and they came to God, and uh, they were praying, and they fasted. And uh, in verse uh, 4, it says, uh, And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah that came to seek the Lord. And in verse 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. So he came to God's house in front of it to, to pray to God with all the people. Uh, you know, the Jehoshaphat the king stood with his people of Judah uh, in Jerusalem in the house of God. And he said in verse 6, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulers, not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen. So, you know, he's just asking, you know, you're God, you're God of all, right? Amen. I'm serving you. And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. And uh, he says, art not thou our God? who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave us to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever, you know? You know, so here he's saying, you know, he sent, he, uh, God sent these people out before and gave that land over to them, you know. It's good, you know, when you come to seek God's advice, people in the church are coming to seek God's plan and advice for them. He who is ears, let him hear, amen? amen. You got to seek God's advice. So Je Jehoshaphat talked to God and praised him of his strength and power and glory and, and honored God. Amen? Mm -hmm. We need to do the same thing. Lift up God's name, Jesus. Uh, 
you know, and here art thou, not thou our God who does drive out the inhabitants of his land before thy people Israel and gaveth the seed of Abraham thy friend forever. So let's go to Isaiah 41.8. Isaiah 41.8. So in verse 7 here in 2 Chronicles, Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? So he's saying Abraham's God's friend forever. Now we're uh, Isaiah 41 8 says, um, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So here, God calls Abraham his friend, my friend. So you want God to be your friend, amen? amen. I want God to be my friend, amen? So uh, uh, let's go to James, James 2, 21 to 23. James 2, 21 to 23. James 2, 21 to 23. It says, One, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works with faith, faith made perfect? In verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So Abraham was the friend of God, amen, and God... God made a promise to him, and he's keeping that promise. And here, here they're asking, you know, you're, you're a friend of our father, help us. So uh, now they're in verse, back in Second Chronicles 20, verse 8. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name's sake. So they built God a, a temple there where they stay, they worship God. They worship God. They dwelt in the house of God to worship God. Amen. And it says, number nine, if when evil cometh upon us is the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. So, you know, they, they, they came and they dwelt in the house of God to worship him. And when troubles come, you know, where do you go? You go to the house of God. You know, you don't go to the world. You don't go to the psychiatrist. Go to God. Go to the Bible. Go to prayer to God. Go to the house of God. Go to other Christians. Don't go away from the house of God. It's the worst thing you could do. You yeah. need to come to the house of God. And then it says, uh, you know, if, if when the evil cometh upon us is the sword judge, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. So God is in that house and God hears your cries and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. So they cried out to God for help. Evil was coming, but they were in the right place, amen? They were in the right place. They were talking to God in God's house. And then now in verse 10 it says, Now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade. So God didn't let them invade them when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us, to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. So, you know, they, they, they came to God, they talked to God, saying, we didn't invade them or destroy them, you know, because God wouldn't let them. But now, they, 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 they you know, they, they, they will reward us by coming to destroy us. Help us, God, you know, help us. You know, just like the people today, they're trying to destroy everything good and godly and teach, and teach everything evil and wicked and... Uh, you know, schools and public and uh, government, and uh, we need to stand. We need to stand on God's word and pray to God and keep God in our hearts and in our in our in our our word and and tell other people and uh, stand on His promises. Amen? Amen. So it says here, verse twelve of Second Chronicles: O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company who cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. So, you know, there's a lot of soldiers they had, a lot of people. They said, man, we don't know what to do. These people, man, with us, just us against them, we're going to be destroyed, you know. But, uh, you know, with God, you know, 
you're you're God of all things, and you know you're our strength and power. You fight for us, you know we, we, we'll never lose. So, so their eyes were upon God, and then it says, you know, all of Judah in verse thirteen stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. So everybody came to God and prayed to God, help us, God. We can't fight this army. What are we going to do? So let's go to Isaiah five twenty. Isaiah 520. You know, there's battles in our lives. We have all kinds of battles. We can't fight them, but God can. If you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, He'll fight your battles for you. He'll go with you through the thick and thin. He'll be with you. So, Isaiah 520 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So God says, whoa, you know, people, you know, nowadays they're calling evil good and good evil. You know, if you go to church and you trust God, oh, that's evil, you know. But, you know, if you want to do some wicked stuff, you know, that, that, that's good. That's okay. We, we're going to stand on that. We're going to take vote. To, you know, let's, let's have drugs. Let our kids use drugs. Let, uh, let you know, let, let, let our kids, you know, change uh, what, they, you know, they were born a, born a boy. They want to be a girl. We'll make them a girl. You know, it's ungodly stuff, you know. God made Adam and Eve, you know, and he, you know, he made you a man. God made you what you are. Thank God, Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Second uh, Timothy three fifteen. Second Timothy three fifteen. Second Timothy three fifteen. Second Timothy three fifteen. 2 Timothy 3.15 and it says from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for proof, for, for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works so when you come to God you're getting his word and and, and you, his Bible, you read this, and he gives you instruction what to do. These people were scared in, in battle. You know, they were outnumbered. They were going to die. They, they, they. But they knew. They knew. They had put their faith and trust in God. And uh, you know, you have tribulation. Romans three five three through five. Romans five three through five. Romans five three through five. Romans 5, 3 through 5. And it says, Not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulations work with patience. So we have troubles. We have tribulations. We have struggles in this life. They're having a struggle there. They're going to be invaded, and they're fighting an army. To, I don't know how many people it is, but it's a lot more than them, and they're having a tribulation. But then it says, In patience, experience and experience hope. So when you have patience with God and you understand God and know who He is, you have experience, and you know with experience you have hope. You have hope God He'll, he'll fight your battles, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. So the Holy Ghost is with you, and you know He, he guides you in all things. These people here were going through some tribulations. And trials and you know what God God they believed in God and they were waiting on God so now in verse in 2nd Chronicles 20 verse 11 and 12 behold I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit so they gave the land you know that was their land and it says, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. So their eyes were upon God. You know, you have to wait on God, amen? You know, you get, sometimes you think things are going bad. Uh, you know, you, you, sometimes you just have to wait. You have to wait on God. You know, and then they brought out, then it says, All Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. So all the people came and prayed to God, the men, the wives, the kids. They were afraid, and they, and they were outnumbered, but they put their faith and trust in God. Amen? Amen. And then it says, Upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of 
Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Amen. So God came. God came to them. God came right in the midst of them. Amen. It says, Jehaziel, who's a Levite priest, the Spirit of the Lord came in the midst of the whole congregation when they were all gathered together. Amen. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid. So don't be afraid or dismayed by the region of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. There's that word again, Pastor Thomas, but God. So God changes things. When God's in the thing, he changes. He has a big change. Here it says, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So when God takes on the battle, he's not going to lose. Amen. That's right. God doesn't lose. Amen. So uh, let's go to Matthew 18.20. Matthew 18.20. Matthew 18.20. They came to God. The whole congregation gathered together. And it says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am I, there am I in the midst of them. So Jesus is in the midst of you. If there's two or three gathered together, in the name of Jesus, he's in the midst of us. Amen? Amen. So Joel 2.27, Joel 2.27, Joel 2.27, Joel Joel 2.27, and it says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. So, you know, here he's saying, you know, he's God. And you know what? Their people aren't ashamed. They gathered, the whole congregation came to God to help because they knew they were outnumbered, and God said he'd help them. He said the battle's his. Ezekiel 36.23. Ezekiel... 36, 23. Ezekiel 36, 23. Ezekiel 36, 23 says, And I will sanctify my great name, which, which was profaned among the heathens, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the, heathen, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. So, God says, you know, these people uh, cursed his name and made fun out of his name and profaned it among the heathen, but he'll, he's going to show them. He's going to stand up for Israel and for Judah and uh, King Jehoshaphat and fight their battle. Sephaniah, Sephaniah 317. Sephaniah 317. Sephaniah 317. says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So, you know, God God is uh, he's happy. He's rejoicing. And, you know, the people are rejoicing that God said, This battle, be not afraid or dismayed. The battle is God. So, you know, don't fear numbers in your life. Don't fear things, you know. Uh, go back to Second Chronicles uh, 2. And we'll go to verse 16, but, you know, don't fear numbers. In this you life, you know, you're going to have people Second against you at work, at home, uh, at, you know, at your job, uh, just in life. You're going to have people against you, and don't fear numbers or, you know, who they think they are. If God's with you, nobody can be against you, That's amen? Right. That's right. You need to trust God and put God first and ask God, and God will help you, amen? God, mm -hmm. God is... Uh, God is what God is God. He can do whatever he wants. Amen. Amen. So God said, you know, here it says, Tomorrow you go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight. So God's telling them they don't need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. So God said, 
If it, it, God said it's his battle, praise God. He fights our battles for us. When things seem unbearable, unbeatable, and all is lost, you know, he comes through right on time, amen, on his time. You know, you think everything's going bad, but God, he comes in and he, he, he does the fighting, the saving, whatever you need, he comes through, amen. <laughs> Let's go to Luke 12.32, Luke 12.32. Luke 12.32. It says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen? So, little flock, you know, it's little, but it's God, so he'll give you the kingdom. Amen? The kingdom of heaven, here's the kingdom of uh, the uh, the. Uh, Father Abraham, which was their land, they're, and they're trying to take it back. Uh, the Moabites, Ammonites, and the people of Seir, and God said he's going to fight for them. Uh, Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy 24. You know, God will fight for you. God, if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, he's with you. He's closer than a brother. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's always with you. So it says here in Deuteronomy 24, For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Amen. Uh, Zechariah 14.3. Zechariah. Zechariah. Excuse me? Yeah. Deuteronomy 24, the last one? Deuteronomy 24, that was. 24 what? 24. Ah, 20 20, and 4. 20, okay. 204. Okay, I couldn't 20, find it. Yeah, it was Deuteronomy 20, <laughs> verse, verse 4. Verse 4, okay. Yeah, that was the last verse. You want me to read that again, or? It's okay. Because I thought you said 24, and she thought so, too. Oh, yeah, 20, uh, verse 4. Zechariah 14, 3. Zechariah 14, 3 says, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations when he fought in the day of battle. So, you know, God's going to stand for these people now. God, uh, back in Second Chronicles, you know, God says, uh, you know, he told them, uh, you need shall not, ye shall, in verse 7, 20, 17, in Second Chronicles says, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Jude and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed, Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. So, you know, and uh, it says, you know, come and watch. You don't need to fight all, all, in, at all. Don't fear. God is with you. Wait on God and do as God says. Amen. You know, Jehoshaphat, uh, Judah, and Jerusalem, they all worship God. They bow down to the Lord. So then look in verse 18. It says, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. So they all bowed down to God and worshiped to God because God is holy. Amen. Amen. He's, he's worthy of our worship. And, you know, we need to bow down to the Lord to ask God with our problems in the church, at home, wherever we're at, and to praise God. And now in verse 19, it says, And the Levites of the children of the Kothathites, and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. So they praised God with a loud voice. Hallelujah! Praise God! You know, so they, they did with a loud voice. And, and as verse 20, it says, They rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall he be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. So they, wrote, they all rose up early. Jehoshaphat reminded the people to trust in the God and believe that he is able. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then he says, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever so god's mercy endureth forever and it still does to this day and it forevermore it will and here he put the 
the people, the singers in the front. So they put the singers in the front singing praises to God and it lifted up their voices. Praise the Lord. Mercy endureth forever. Not once, twice, but forever. Amen. So they, 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 they had the singers. And in verse 22, and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, uh, and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, so God set up ambushments. Ambushments are, you know, persons like hiding behind something to attack against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. So they were struck or hit hard. They were attacked. They, they were destroyed. They were killed. So, you know, when God does something, he does it thoroughly and efficiently, and there's no, I mean, there's nothing. It's 100%. It's not 99.9, .9, it's 100%. And, uh, you know, the ambushes, people were hiding, they were jumping out, fighting, killing. All the people, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, they fought and killed each other. You know, they destroyed each other, and God destroyed their armies. And it says, verse 24, when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, you know, they were up in the watchtower, they were looking down unto, unto the multitude of people, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. So, you know, Judah came to the watchtower, and they were looking down on the fight, the battle, and they looked upon this great multitude of many armies against them, and they were all dead bodies on the ground. Nobody escaped death. You know, God had won that battle for them that day, and God will fight for your battle as long as you believe and trust in him and praise and honor his name. Amen? Amen. So here it says none escaped. So that means they were all dead. They were all dead. All those armies were dead. And then it says in verse 25, and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, you know, they were all dead. So they had whatever they were wearing, jewelry, clothes, weapons, you know. And they found, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. So, you know, it was three days it took them to take their stuff. That's how much stuff they had, uh, you know. Jehoshaphat, the, the inhabitant, they came and took the spoil, jewelry, weapons, goods, food, drinks, clothes. Three days they spent gathering all this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's just so much they had. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Burachah, for, they, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Burachah to this day. So, you know, this place was called, they assembled the fourth day to give God the praise and glory for the victory. Amen? Amen. And we need to give God every day in our lives when something good, we have to give God the glory and the praise and the honor for the victories in our lives and for the battles in our lives, which we, you know, we're going to have them. You're going to have them. In this world, you're going to have battles, you're going to have tribulations, you're going to have trials, but give praise to God and ask God to help and he will. Amen? Uh, so then 27 says, Then they returned, every man of Judah, and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them. So Jehoshaphat was in the front, because he was the king, to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. So they were happy. You know, God God saved them. God uh, protected them. God won that battle for them. Otherwise, if they didn't trust God, they probably would have been destroyed. You know, you know I told people, you have, to, you have to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh. You have to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you'd be destroyed in this life. This life, the world has nothing to offer you. There's nothing. It's all false hope. Jesus Christ is the true hope of eternity. Through him, through him, you have true happiness. And true, true, your life will be just, just in, in him, it's true happiness. It's not false happiness, which the world offers you. So they went back home to Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat in front of all of the men of Judah, Jerusalem with joy. You know, the Lord made him to rejoice over their enemies. Amen. And, you know, God, you know, we need to rejoice. We need to rejoice in God. Philippians 4, Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Philippians 4, 4 through 8. You don't have to really, you know, rejoice in God and Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoice in God, Philippians 4, 4 through 8. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. So you're supposed to, 
you know, let God, uh, you know, you got to be like God, your gentleness, like the Lord, and show it to other people. Jo the Lord's kindness, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. So, you know, be careful for nothing. Let everything be known to God. Ask God for help in your everything in your life. And then it says, in the peace of God, which patheth all understanding, not some, all understanding, shall keep your hearts. So to keep your heart and your mind through, through Christ Jesus. So only through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, what the, what, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are, good, are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So, you know, you, you're going to have troubles. Don't think of the troubles. Let the troubles go. Think on the good things. Think on the good things God has done for you and in your life and what he's going to do more good things. So think on those things. Don't worry. Something happened bad. Don't dwell on it. Let it pass. You know, it came to pass and you know, God will get you through all things through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, John 16, 33. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. John 16, It says, John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Jesus Christ has overcome the world, and through him you can overcome all your problems and your battles and your fights in this world, and you know, he'll stand with you. You know, he'll go through, God will go through with go through them with he'll go through with all your battles with you. And he will fight for us. Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy 1, Deuteronomy 20, 1 through 4. Deuteronomy 20, 1 through 4. Deuteronomy 20, 1 through 4. And said, When thou goest out to battle against their, thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall hear unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day on the battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is He that goes with you to fight for your fight for you against your enemies to save you. Amen. And the way you get saved is through the Lord Jesus Christ to turn from your sins, repent of your sins, give them to God. Jesus Christ, He died on the cross on the cross of Calvary, shed His precious blood for our sins to pay for them all, past, present, and future. And if you trust in Him, repent and He'll save your soul. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ephesians six. 10, Ephesians 6, 10, Ephesians 6, 10, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and we can go through the next few verses, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So, you know, the tricks, the schemes, you know, the devil's got all kinds of tricks and stuff to fight, you know, make us, try to make us miserable in this life. Yeah. But, you know, put on that whole armor of God, pray, read your Bible, you know, when something bad goes wrong, go ahead, thank you, Jesus. Praise God, you know, let it go, let him yell it out. Let him know who you serve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places so there is spiritual wickedness in high places and you know from government to jobs to everything in your life man there's there's devils everywhere but then it says in verse 13 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand so you need to stand you need to stand with this bible you need to stand in prayer you need to stand with other church people 
you need to ask people to pray for you, pray for other people. And uh, let's finish with uh, 1 Corinthians uh, verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. It says, "But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ." So we get the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord, for these words and uh, inspiration. Lord, uh, help us in our lives and our the daily battles with uh, everything, with spiritual wickedness in high places and this uh, this world. Uh, we we stand we stand on your word, Lord, the Bible and. We stand on your teachings, Lord, that uh, we put our trust in you and our faith in you and Jesus Christ who died for our sins and to help us with us, who stands close to us daily. Lord, we just pray um, for other people to trust you. We, we pray that um, you give its boldness to go out into the world and tell people and tell others about you, Lord. I pray that uh, you just be with us now and give us safety on the way home and bring us back again to church on Friday night, in Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. And we're going to sing Victory in Jesus. Is that 116? 116. 116. 116. 116. So Jesus give you the victory. Amen. Amen. That's page 116. 116. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, Come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew. me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Praise God. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen.
you guys can have everybody can have a victory in and through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I just uh, pray and uh, like we watched this morning, uh, Pastor Thomas, but said, but God. So God said, but God, but God. So God intervenes for us. We need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ with all our things and to tell other people, grab some tracks, uh, get out there, witness to people this week. You know, pray for the other pastors and missionaries, uh, Pastor Stiller, Pastor French, Pastor Clark, uh, Pastor Zorick with that. Uh, pray for Miss Rose and uh, uh, Elijah and Lydia. We pray for them and we pray for uh, Steve and we pray for uh, uh, just so many people. Eddie, we pray for Eddie. Eddie's in the hospital. We pray that God just help him and find him a place to stay. It's getting cold in Chicago. Yeah, and Mr. Ken, we pray for Mr. Ken and his uh, his daughter and just his, uh, the people he works with, that he'd be a witness. He wants to be a witness and he wants to stand for God. And he, so we told him, stand. So that's all we have to do, stand. And, uh, you know, we, we, just, we just have to trust in the Lord with all our heart, mind, and soul. Amen. Amen. Let's pray again. Dear Lord, thank you for everything tonight. Thank you for uh, just uh, loving us, Lord, and uh, Lord, for your word. And Lord, we just take, it, take your word with us and uh, just uh, stay with us and be with us and give us strength to tell other people for you. And just be with us, give us safety on the way home tonight. And we just uh, thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Great is, is the Lord, Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, the size of the north, the city of the great king. All right, Miss Lorene, Esther, Mickey, and Derek, God bless everybody. Have a good week. Amen. Amen.